Inc. Underneath that, the second bullet said, industry-funded studies most likely to show no link. Then you read the data that this study uh, you know, verifies these conclusions. At 6 o'clock, only two hours later, these two bullets were compressed into a single bullet and changed to read. It found no significant association between the risk of tumors and overall use of mobile phones, including cellular and portable phones. Basically, a 180-degree change, and as you can see, only two hours later, this is the power of the cell phone industry. We see this time and again in the cell phone industry, in, in the smart meter industry, that we're seeing a lot more industry spin than we are hard science. This is the most complicated uh, slide that I've placed today, and it is the most important. So allow me to dissect this, give you the importance of what this is. Over here is a map of San Francisco. The peninsula is on the bottom, Golden Gate Bridge is on the top, and as you can see, there is a plus. Okay? The middle of that plus is the Sutro Tower. You can see the Sutro Tower up on the top. That thing pumps out the better part of 20 megawatts of radiated energy into the environment. It radiates AM radio, FM radio, and uh, television. From the period, 1973 to 1988, it was the primary source of RF radiation to everyone on that peninsula. What's good about that? A, I don't want to live there, but B, it is a fabulous test tube. You know the exact dose based on where people live. There are 123 people in this study, children under the age of 21, that have contracted either leukemia, uh, lymphoma, or glioma, the, the, basically the most common cancers of children under the age of 21. And these little stars indicate where they lived. And the, they are pretty much all over the populate, all over the peninsula. Okay, they are not concentrated underneath the Sutro Tower. They are fairly evenly distributed all over. Okay? And this is a plot of the radiation they received from the Sutro Tower and those children's prevalency compared to the general population of these cancers. And we see that if you're directly under the Sutro Tower, you have an 18-fold chance of getting childhood leukemia. Not 18%, 18-fold. An 18,000% increase in the prevalency of cancer directly underneath the Sutro Tower. As you go away from the Sutro Tower up to the coast, which is five kilometers away, you are still at four times a, a four-fold increase in the prevalency of childhood leukemia. This gorgeous uh, correlation uh, persists for uh, all four of the diseases studied. In other words, this is a disease of RF radiation. There are no other cofactors. Uh, it doesn't matter what your genetic background is. It doesn't matter your socioeconomic position. It doesn't matter toxics that you're exposed to. What matters is where you live on the peninsula and the amount of RF radiation that you receive. This is a plot of the RF radiation as you go from the Sutro Tower out. It is denominated in uh, <clears throat> microwatts per square centimeter, which is sort of an industry standard. It's one of the power factor standards. So this is the number directly underneath the Sutro Tower that corresponds to this amplification. And out here at the edge of the peninsula, we are down in this range of, say, 0.1 to 1 microwatts per square centimeter. Okay? As we move over to this side of the plot, I have given you what the radiative power is of a typical smart meter at 1 foot, at 3 feet, at 30 feet, and at 92 feet. And what I'm asserting is I do not want to be this close to a smart meter. That is in this highly accelerated area where uh, I'm increasing, in this case, childhood leukemia, but by implication, it is biologically active for other diseases. This is the only one that was studied in this study, but what it says is this is a, a canary in the, in the uh, uh, coal mine, and we should stay away from this level of radiation. When you were three feet away, you were here. 30 feet away, you were there. But at 92 feet, you are under, this is a logarithmic plot. So I don't know if you're safe, but this is like an area where it might be safe, or at least safer. So... Um, I decided to plot these contours in my neighborhood. Here's my house, 
from Google, you know, above. And this is the danger zone. That is a 92-foot uh, radius circle. And my meter is here, and the smart meter is going to radiate my living room. It's going to radiate one of the bedrooms. And this is fairly dangerous. I would point out that this level of radiation is incident on the roofs of the houses in question. Okay? This is attenuated when it goes inside the house where the children spend most of their time. So the actual risk profile is down here somewhere. So when I plot this in my, uh, uh, in my neighborhood, it is actually much worse out here. And this is an accurate portrayal of what conditions are like inside my house. That is, this is an inside the house contour. This is a risk factor. This is where my neighbor's meter is. And likewise, there is a bedroom affected. And this is my second neighbor. This is a daycare center. Their meter is in the playground of the daycare center. Children will be walking within inches of the smart meter. First of all, PG&E has done nothing to ameliorate this. The, these have been installed down in LA, and they have not informed citizens who have uh, bedrooms that are near the radiation source, nor daycares or other child-populated areas like schools that have excess. And, and again, this is, this is uh, a much worse exposure contour than uh, is given here because these risks are inside the house and these risks are direct radiation through the air, significantly higher. So the first point I'd like to make is this, the safety of these devices is not at all uh, verified by the data. And uh, if you take uh, a group of lab rats and you give them uh, an L50 dose of a toxin, let's say lead or mercury, that is a dose that kills half of the population. So if you give half of that dose to the, you get, let, you get more survivors, okay? But if you take half of the L10 dose for lead and half of the L10 dose for mercury and you give that to the rats, they all die. What I'm making a point is that the risk factors to human beings and to health is not linear. You can't make an assumption of half is, is twice as good as whatever. Uh, and so in the case of this radiation, it is pulsed radiation, meaning that it's on briefly and then it's off. It's on briefly and it's off. And you do not have the ability, when there's a continuous, like with, this, with the Sutro Tower, which is continuous radiation, your body doesn't have a chance to sort of cope with it. Okay? It is on, it is off. And it could be that this form of radiation is vastly more damaging to human health. We don't know. It is totally uh, un, uh, unknown risk. The uh, FCC says that 600 microwatts per square centimeter is an allowable continuous radiation. 600 microwatts per square centimeter. That is this line on this curve. As we can see, this is vastly in excess of the measured dose level at a at a at a 18 fold increase in childhood leukemia. This study was this level has been based on uh, studies done in the mid-1980s. We are much smarter now. And, and this study was published in 2002, I believe, 2002, which means the PG&E had every opportunity to be aware of this study before they configured their system. They could have put high-gain antennas on and dropped this by a factor of 1,000, and they did not. They could have done uh, uh, um, uh, transmission of signals uh, on the power wiring. They could have done... Uh, uh, optical wiring, and they have done none of that. They have taken uh, a, a technology path that exposes us to, according to this study, significant risk. Here is a <clears throat> typical smart meter that's uh, installed uh, on a wall, and this is a graph that was measured on the pillow of a person who was sleeping on this side. The pillow. This means that person is exposed to radiation uh, eight hours every night when they are sleeping, and we measured 0.05 microwatts per square centimeter, well above the safety level. Uh, in Italy, their smart grid is powered by a system that uses no radiation. It is technologically possible. If you talk to PG&E, they say, no, it is not possible. As George alluded to early on, uh, 
when I found out about the smart meter, I got a message in the mail that said we're about to put one of those babies in, and I pretty much jumped out of my skin. I did some minor research, and I knew right off the bat these things were trouble on a stick. I called to opt out, and they said, you're in a lot of hurt. We're not opting anybody out. And so I started sending emails to my mayor, and I said, we need to have a town council meeting. I want to bring this up. And we agreed that I would give a 15-minute presentation that's a condensed version of this that gives them some of these findings. I'm a registered PE in the state of California. Uh, you know, I have the ability to talk about this subject. Uh, when the meeting came up, PG&E was on the podium for 45 minutes giving their spin, and uh, I was denied the ability to present this information to them. So what you're seeing is suppressed information. Uh, two days before that meeting, PG&E, well, what I, unbeknownst to me, the mayor was forwarding all of my emails to her, to PG&E. PG and requested my presence at a meeting. They gave me the spin. I said, you're way above these leukemia levels. Their spin was, that's only one study. We use the FCC. They look at all studies. We use the, uh, the standards from the UN. They look at all studies. And they, as we'll hear from Mary Beth later on, there is significant uh, insincerity in how the, the uh, industry uses this. Uh, just Recently, the Los Angeles Unified School District said that 1994 law that gives the uh, local governments no control over cell phone towers, they want that repealed. They see this impacting the health of their children. The European Parliament has recently voted uh, in favor of being more, pre uh, more precautions to human health than is currently being done. France has banned cell phones in primary schools. They can only text. And <clears throat> the federal government has... Uh, has officially acknowledged that electronic hypersensitivity is a disability. That means the municipalities are on the hook to uh, ameliorate effects of uh, uh, affected people. This, I believe, is the whole reason PG&E came to see me, the privacy issue. Here we have a smart meter that is monitoring the power going to your house, and here are some activities that might be occurring in the house. And what I've shown here is a $3.24 DSP chip. DSP stands for Digital Signal Processing. This is something that I learned at MIT. And for the better part of nine years, I worked for Ingersoll Rand, and I designed digital signal filtering for uh, industrial control.